Hi everyone, this is Rosie, and today I'm going to be sewing an origami triangle pouch. So, let's get started. I was really excited to make these triangle pouches because they're really cute. It's a great scrap buster, and it's also a really nice little item to make for a craft show. You can put an optional key ring on it if you like. The pouch has only one compartment in it, which you can see right there, but it has two flaps, so you can access it with this flap, or you can access the interior with the flap on this side. And then I have a few things here to show you about what you might be able to put in these. Obviously, if you decide to put on a split key ring, you can attach your keys to it. I have these dollar bills here that have been folded into triangles. I will show how to make these at the end of the video, but how cute would it be to give somebody a gift of cash and put it in the pouch as part of the gift with the bill folded like a triangle. You can also use it as a little change purse. So you have your change here. You just drop in all your coins, close it up, and you can get to the change from either side of the pouch. Just like that. Then I thought, how cute would it be to turn one of these into a little traveling sewing kit. So I just have some items here, a tiny pair of scissors, a little spool of thread, there are sewing needles in here, and some buttons, and some pins. You can attach your keys to this and have your little sewing kit with you all the time, or you could just throw it inside your bag. And then another thing that it's useful for is carrying your earbuds. So you just take your earbuds, roll them all up, and put them in there. Maybe you have some other ideas about what you could put inside the pouch, but no matter what you decide, it is a really fun, fast, and cute project. If you would like to sew along with me, I do have a free downloadable pattern available to make the pouch, and I'll provide a link in the description below the video to where you can find that pattern. I'm using 100% cotton quilting fabric to make the pouch. This piece here will be for my exterior. This will be my interior. Then you need a piece of Pellon SF-101 or some woven interfacing that's similar to the SF-101 and a piece of Decofil Light. And all of the measurements for cutting out these pieces are on the pattern sheet. I'll also be using a friction pen for marking. You always want to be careful with these because while the ink will disappear with heat, it comes back with cold. I have some optional key rings here. I'll be using one of these key rings on the pouch and this key ring is three quarters of an inch. You'll need one set of grommets for attaching the key ring. You need two full sets of cam snaps and you could use some wonder clips or pins and I have some Aurifil 50 weight thread here for sewing. Take your piece of woven interfacing and you want to fuse that to the wrong side of your exterior fabric. And you'll do that according to the manufacturer's instructions. Cut out your template and you want to place it on top of the Decoville light and trace all around the template. When you're done tracing, go ahead and cut out that piece of interfacing. Make sure that you cut right on that line that you traced. Take the piece of Decoville light that you just cut out and fuse it to the wrong side of the exterior. And you'll do this according to the manufacturer's instructions. After that is fused into place, go ahead and take the interior piece of fabric and you want to layer it with the exterior right sides together. At the sewing machine, we're going to sew completely around that piece of Decoville light and you want your needle to fall right along the edge of that Decoville. And what I'm going to do so that you can see it easier on camera is I'm going to use my pen to make a dark line. And I will sew right on top of that dark line. Now, you can do this also if you like. 
I'm doing it for demonstration purposes, but it does help you to stay right next to that Decoville because you really do not want to be sewing on top of the Decoville. You just want to be sewing alongside it. You also need to leave an opening to turn the pouch right side out. So I'm going to stop with my pen marks right here and here and then I'll know to leave this section open as I'm sewing. And then if you like you can put in some clips or pins to hold those layers together. I'm sewing on the Janome Continental M7 Professional Sewing Machine. I'm using an open toe foot so that I can clearly see my needle landing on that black line. And I'm using a stitch length of 2.4. And you do want to backstitch at both ends. Try and stay on the line the best you can. Now when you get to the curve you want to go slowly. If you need to just take one stitch at a time and then pivot a little bit. I do have the machine set to the pivot function right now. And by pivoting this way, taking one stitch at a time, you'll get a nice curve. And then just keep sewing around and sew the other curve exactly the same way. When you're done sewing, you want to trim all the way around the Decoville. I like to trim with about a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So I'm just eyeballing it. And just follow the contour of that Decoville. Then for the sharper corners here, I just want to trim close to my stitching. Just be careful that you don't clip through your stitching. So about like that. We'll do that on both ends. And then for the curves, I actually like to use a pair of pinking shears. Now if you don't have any pinking shears, that's okay. You don't need them. But I'm just going to trim a little bit closer to that curve with the pinking shears. And then, on each one of those valleys, I like to clip in. And this actually helps to give you a really smooth curve. Again, if you don't have the pinking shears, just make a series of clips that are fairly close together and make sure that you don't go through that stitching. And then do the same exact thing to the other curve. Now we can press the seam open you want to turn back the exterior over the Decoville. And give it a good pressing. And then I like to use my point turner. I'll get in between the exterior and the interior there and I'll just slide this back and forth and then fold back that exterior. I just do this on the exterior side. You don't need to do it on both sides. Again, just get in between there pull it back and iron. And the same thing around the curves. And then continue to press all the way around. When you're done pressing, you're ready to turn everything right side out. I like to get my thumb right in the little curve there and then push. 
and then start to turn the rest of it right side out. And the same thing on this side, I get my thumb right up into that curve and then I push. Then you'll take the point turner and get that in there. This one is from Clover. This is my favorite one. You want to push out those sharp corners. Make sure when you're pushing that you don't push through your seam. Don't want to do that. You can also get up here in the curves and push those out a little bit. This point turner has a curved edge and you can kind of get up in there with the curve. And just keep working at that until everything is nicely turned out. And then you'll go ahead and press everything very nicely. When you're pressing around the opening, you want to fold back the interior fabric so that it's even with the top of the decalville. So you'll get it nice and even and then press. And then for the exterior, you want to fold that over the decalville. Make sure it's nice and even with the decalville and then give that a press. And that should give you a nice clean closing. Now we'll go back to the sewing machine and top stitch completely around about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch from the edge. I like to start where that opening is, so I'll start right around here and then I will sew around. I'm going to use a stitch length probably of 3.0 and when we top stitch it's going to close that opening. I have the same open toe foot on my machine. If you have an edge stitch foot, you can go ahead and use that too. I'm not going to back stitch until I finish sewing all the way around. Now you want to sew the same way when you get to these rounded corners here. Take one stitch at a time and pivot if you need to. And now that I'm getting to where I began, I'll stitch over those original stitches a little bit and then back stitch. To fold this into a triangle, you want to take the two rounded edges, you want to twist it just like this, and bring those two sharp edges together. Then you can just sort of finger press a little bit, and then you want to go ahead and press down this folded seam. Now you'll take each one of these triangular flaps and fold those down. I like the flap to fold right along this edge right here. And then I'll press that fold down. And same thing here. I'll fold this flap down right over this edge and iron it in place. For my camp snaps, I just like to mark the placement somewhere within this little curve and I really just eyeball it. So right about there looks good to me. And then I just put a mark. So I, this is where my camp snap will go. And I'll just take my little awl here and poke a hole straight through. Then to place the other side of the camp snap, I take my pen and I put it right through that point where I just poke that hole. 
And so now I have this mark here. That is where the opposite side of the camp snap will go. And then again, I just poke a hole right through. And then you want to do the same exact thing on the other side. So you have two flaps on this triangle pouch. I like to put the male part of the cam snap on the flap. So I'll just sit my cam snap in there and then I'll take my tool and secure it on there. I do have a video on how to install cam snaps that I will link to. When you're ready to put in the other side of the cam snap, this cap right here, the cap is the one with the point on it, that needs to be placed on the interior side of the pouch. So the cap will go right through here. And then the female part of the snap will be on the exterior. If you decide that you want to put on a split key ring, we need to set in a grommet. And I like to put my grommet right in this sharp corner. So either side, this side or this side. You want to stay away from your stitching line, so I go in fairly close to my stitching line, but not on my stitching line, because I don't want to poke through my stitches, and just make a mark. And then I'm going to take a tool that I have here to cut a hole that's the perfect size for my grommets. And then I can just clean it up with some scissors. I'll take this half of the grommet and I'll stick it right in that hole. Then I'll place on the flat side of the grommet and then I can punch this in place with my rivet press. And now you can go ahead and attach your split ring. I'll show you how to fold the dollar bill into a triangle if you'd like to give that a try. First thing that you want to do is take the entire bill and fold it in half lengthwise. Make sure all the edges are even and make a nice crisp crease there. Then you'll open that up and you want to take this top corner right here and we're going to fold it right down to that crease and as you fold it down to the crease you want to have a little sharp corner right here. So this is how it looks on both sides. And then you have this point on the crease that we made before and then you'll press it all down and give that a nice crease. Then you're going to take the bill and fold it right over this edge here. So you fold it over that edge and now this long edge is even with this folded edge right here. And then of course you'll crease that. Then pick it up and now we want to fold this half right over this edge just like this. And now this long edge is even with this folded edge. And then you're going to take the remaining piece here and fold it over this long edge. You'll give that a nice crease. And then you're going to take this part right here, open this up, and tuck that in. And now you have a dollar bill in the shape of a triangle. I do hope that you've enjoyed watching the video. Please do take advantage of accessing the free downloadable pattern. I would like to thank everyone who has supported me by liking my videos and subscribing to my channel. It really means a lot and I truly appreciate it. 
And if you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe because I would love to have you as a subscriber.